The citizens of Evansville awoke on a chilly morning on January 15, 1980, to shocking news. The cold-blooded murder of the family of four, mother, father, and children ages four and five. Police initially had no suspects. We have no concrete leads on suspects at this time. We're still in, in the process of uh, checking the area of these two uh, crimes for any physical evidence that may be there. This was a typical northeast side neighborhood, no different from any other suburban Evansville area, until last night. Now neighbors are filled with apprehension and fear that they could be victims. Close neighbors and friends of the Gilligan family are bewildered why the tragedy took the lives of their best friends and children's playmates. I actually knew some folks and that lived out there on Aspen Drive, which is where the crime happened, and they moved as a result of this. And, uh, some of the people that we had interviewed as witnesses uh, moved as a result of that. Yesterday was Gilligan's day off from his job as warehouse manager for L.B. Jones Furniture Company. And as they always did on his day off, he and his wife had spent the day doing something special together with their children. Lisa and Gregory had both received $5 in Christmas gifts, and they got to spend the money yesterday to buy a gift for themselves. After showing their grandparents their gifts, they returned home about 8 p.m. They were greeted with an unexpected surprise. Donald Ray Wallace, a 22-year-old man at the time, had broken into their home with the intention of robbery. When the intruder broke in, he had taped the back glass of the house, of the window, uh, I assume, to keep the noise down and keep the glass from falling. Wallace, frightened that the family had come home, was looking for a way to restrain the family while he got away. Wallace later claimed he had no intention of harming them, that he only wanted to get away unidentified. He had tried to restrain them, but when he realized that this was not possible, he then shot and beat Patrick Gilligan, the father, to death. He then shot Teresa twice and then their children, five-year-old Lisa and four-year-old Gregory. Wallace's explanation for shooting the children was that he didn't want the children to grow up without parents or living with the trauma of watching their parents being killed. This was, this was horrific. He, he shot a little five-year-old boy and a little four-year-old girl in the head with a gun. Uh, the, the image is so dramatic that when we showed the pictures of the trial, and the trial was in Terre Haute, so it wasn't even people from this community, uh, one of the jurors got up, ran to the jury room, and vomited. That's how horrific those pictures were. And uh, <clears throat> it's a terrible, terrible crime. Uh, he just did it for no reason. Leaving the family's bodies in their house, he escaped. Wallace went to his partner's girlfriend's house, a woman with whom he was having an affair. Police, meanwhile, were in search of a suspect. Ms. Durham willingly told detectives that she and Wallace spent the day of the 14th at her 3517 Kathleen residence. Wallace and Ms. Durham took pictures of themselves with the property reportedly taken from the Gilligan home. According to the testimony, the pictures were taken so Wallace could send them to a friend in jail to show, quote, what he had done. At 6 p.m., Wallace reportedly told Ms. Durham he was going out and would return. At 9 p.m., Wallace returned to the home where he reportedly burned his green army jacket splattered with blood outside the Kathleen residence. Well, we went out uh, to where I, evidence of a fire had been and there was a green army jacket that uh, had been set on fire. And in searching the army jacket, what was left of it, I found a couple of rings in the pocket and those were rings that uh, were stolen from the uh, Gilligan family. Later on in the case, it was found that Wallace had not only broken into the Gilligan house that night, but he had first robbed their neighbor, Ralph Hendricks, before breaking into the Gilligan residence. Karen, there is an, an arrest warrant, according to Sheriff Jim DeGroote, this information just released. An arrest warrant is out for 30-year-old Donald Ray Wallace of Evansville. This warrant is on charges of burglary, but DeGroote told the news media that Wallace may be believed to uh, have participated in the uh, quadruple murder that took place this morning. Detectives uh, started piecing it together and each piece fell in place a little more solidly and we got a lucky break this afternoon. What they did was they called in all the uh, detectives from the Evansville Police Department, Sheriff's Department and the Indiana State Police to a meeting and said, hey, everybody who works on burglaries, anybody seen anything like this? And they held up a picture of that way that thing was taped and three detectives immediately stood up and said, yeah, that's Donald Ray Wallace and Richard Milligan. Right before we got ready to leave the office, uh, we had a, a phone call 
And it was actually, uh, it was the coach uh, at Wright's, uh, Bob Ashworth. And I don't remember who answered the phone, but he said that he was out walking his dog and he said he saw someone go into a window of a house. He said, I'm not sure which house it was. It was one of two houses. We uh, met with Smith or Ashworth and uh, he pointed out the house that he thought it was. And we knock on the door and an elderly lady answered. And uh, we asked her if anyone lived upstairs and she said no. And we said, well, a neighbor thinks he saw somebody go upstairs. And it was almost humorous. She says, well, get him out. I don't want him up there. So we go to the uh, stairs, tried the light switch. The lights did not come on. She said no one's lived upstairs in years and the bulbs had been taken out, used in other places, and it's totally dark up there. So my partner hollered upstairs, uh, we know you're up there, come to the top of the stairs. And no one responded to that. And he hollered again, we know you're up there. If you don't come down, we're coming up after you. Still got no response. And we started to take a step up the stairs and I said, just a minute, John. I says, we're going to assume that you're armed and you can rest assured we are. And with that, I jacked a shell and a shotgun. And when someone said, just a second, we kind of looked at each other and said, there is somebody up there because we really didn't know. Mm -hmm. And uh, we told him, we said, come to the top of the stairs. We had him uh, pull up his shirt uh, so we could see there's nothing in the waistband of his pants, turn around. And we still didn't know who it was, had no idea who it was. And we had him uh, walk down the stairs backwards with his hands over his head. And I asked him, I said, what's your name? He said, Richard Milligan. Well, when he said Richard Milligan, John and I both looked at each other. Richard Milligan is Donald Wallace's running mate. Richard Milligan is in jail. So we knew then. So I said, okay, Richard. I said, uh, we're, we're, gonna, we're gonna cuff you and we're gonna talk to you for a minute. And I put the cuffs on him and uh, he said, am I under arrest? I said, he said, yes. And uh, I said, yes. He said, what for? I said, four counts of murder. And with that, it's just like the life went out of his body. He said, if I had known you knew who I was, this wouldn't have played out this way. Wallace was raised by neglectful parents and was in counseling by age 10. A counselor warned about serious emotional problems which are expressed in hostile, aggressive behavior. His parents, Donald and Patricia, were divorced when he was four, and he spent most of his childhood living between parents. The welfare department or somebody, somehow she got him taken away from him, and they gave him to her, his grandmother, I think it was, and that's when he was in his teen years, and that's when he got in, in, all, get in all kinds of trouble and everything like that. By the time he was 12, he had been expelled from school, spent time in a home for boys, and later the state youth reformatory at Rockville. After being proven guilty with an overwhelming amount of evidence, he was sentenced to death. Wallace thought it was unfair that the court failed to consider his health problems when going into trial. He'd been found uh, incompetent to stand trial, and so we were looking for a way to get another hearing to convince the judge that he was faking, because he was faking. Later, Stan Levko, the prosecutor in the case, said he was told Wallace had a near-genius IQ. As the case went to trial, it was proved that Wallace falsely convinced the psychiatrist of his own insanity. He was an intelligent man with wasted potential, as many have described him. Wallace tried many times to appeal his case while waiting his death sentence to be carried out. His appeals were repeatedly denied, but he was granted multiple stays of execution. One of his arguments for appeal was that he believed his death sentence was unconstitutional because it was based on an invalid circumstantial evidence. He did not think the court should have taken his previous violent criminal record into account. After a long 25 years of attempted appeals to various courts, Wallace's final appeal was denied by the Indiana Supreme Court and the final date of Wallace's execution was set. On March 10, 2005, Wallace, then age 47, was executed at the Indiana State Prison in Michigan City. Wallace's last words to his family members and friends were, I hope everyone can find peace with this. His attorney stated that Wallace, after being on death row for over 23 years, only wished for peace for everyone affected by the murders. Although Ronald Ray Wallace was adjudicated as schizophrenic, no one will fully understand his reasoning behind the sudden and violent murder of the Gilligan family that night of January 14th, 1980. I mean, this is absolutely a family's night, worst nightmare. You go out with your 
your husband and wife or your kids, you go out somewhere to, and you come home, it's dark, and you walk into your own home and boom, there's a burglar who kills you, you know, kills your family. Wallace was ultimately executed after 23 years on death row, and even though he was executed in 2005, this tragedy will never be forgotten in the hearts of the citizens of Evansville.